Welcome, everybody, to another NHL offseason discussion video. Today, we're going to be talking about the New York Islanders in their offseason. And joining me is a very, very special guest. It's Kim, Isles Girl 3. Her channel will be linked down in the description. As always, please show some support. Help her out. Give another, give a sub. And uh, Kim, it's awesome to have you here. Thank you so much for coming on. And can't wait to talk some Islanders with you. Yeah, what's up? I mean, maybe we don't have much to talk about, but <laughs> <laughs> well, you, that's been that's been kind of the story with the Isles this off season is how nothing they've done. Like they've just for or a team that you know was had a tough year last year, missed the playoffs, and you know was kind of expecting some sort of changes. Well, they changed the coach, but other than that, roster wise they're pretty much running it back with the same team with the exception of adding uh, Alexander Romanov to the back end. So just, were, were you surprised with how little they did this off season? Uh, absolutely. Uh, we were given some false promises. I felt like from Lou at the beginning of this uh, off season, especially after the draft, Lou came in and said, you know, we're going to get that piece. We're going to get that offensive piece. We're going to go and we're going to drive for that offensive piece that we've been missing. And I was like, finally, it's going to get done. We've been missing this for years. And here we are. <laughs> yeah, it's. And they were rumored to be in on some big guns, too. There was talk about them being in on Johnny Goodrow. There was talk about them in Nazem Qadri. And, you know, it not it just none of it ever actually happened. And all of a sudden now, literally, Alexander Romanov is the only addition to this team this offseason in a draft night trade uh, with the Montreal Canadiens. And Romanov is an interesting player he's still very young 22 I love Romanov. he's played I love he's played a couple seasons now with montreal uh has a real edge to his game uh really plays with an attitude which i like about him a lot mm -hmm. especially for a young player like that hasn't done a ton offensively but i do think there's more potential there for him offensively he's certainly going to get an opportunity i think with this islanders team to come in and probably play a top four role on that left side and, yes. and have a chance to uh, really solidify himself as an NHL player and really start to reach that potential that he has. Yeah, no, absolutely. Alexander Romanov, I didn't know much about his name before he came to the Islanders. Um, the first experience I got with him was the reaction from the Montreal fan base themselves from the trade. The first thing with, I thought we were getting JT Miller. Yeah. That's the first thing I thought uh, coming into I There was no discussion from Montreal. Um, and so when we heard that coming from Bettman with Montreal trade, uh, that was with the Islanders, my brother and I looked at each other. We went, what? <laughs> um, but it was in Vancouver. Uh, yeah. So it was a surprise, but it was interesting at the same point because it was who is who are, who are we getting here? Um, but when you have a reaction from a fan base where they're going, what are you doing? No, I'm like not Romanov. I'm like, OK, now I'm interested. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um but seeing from uh, trusted uh, friends and the Montreal fan base, seeing um, his percentages, I really like Romanov. I, I love his, um, just from also um, seeing um, his personal like interviews, things like that. I love him as a, a person, but also uh, I've loved what he's been able to put at the table. I think him joining with Dobson is definitely what uh, Dobson's needed to, someone who, to support him, especially skating skyline. I know Dobson, uh, Charo is not the best with the uh, skating, but he definitely, he's got that, he had that mentorship. And now I feel like Dobson can fly in his own and he can kind of bring some mentorship to Romanov as well. Cause you're talking about not bringing offensively. I heard a lot of Montreal people that he has offensiveness there. He can definitely put some shots towards that. He has a great, you know, shot. It's just about confidence wise with him. Mm -hmm. It's bringing that confidence out. He didn't have a lot of confidence, uh, you know, like, cause it, especially getting that play time on the ice with him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you don't have a lot of play time and you're kind of like fighting for the position, you lack the confidence to go for scoring roles especially in a defensive position yep. so i feel with dobson who loves taking the shots he loves going for scoring that's going to bring a lot of confidence in the game uh they're going to bring a lot of chemistry uh towards each other and that will add to his offensive side so i feel that's going to help and defensively he's been <laughs> being best friends with sorokin 
him and Sorokin have been so close this off season, especially, mm-hmm. you know, both Russian, both speak fluently. They've been at, they've, he's been at chilling at Sorokin's house this off season. His wife took a selfie and you see Sorokin like in the background, giving the <laughs> peace sign, like they have been best friends this off season. So I feel like that's going to bring chemistry in the back defensively. They're going to be able to communicate so well with each other. So I feel like he's going to be such a great addition defensively and offensively. I feel like he's really a beautiful piece that we've added this off season. Yeah. And I, I like the upside potential with him, especially still being just 22. I mean, when you get that added into your decor and, and somebody who's get, now getting a fresh chance with a new team, then there's a lot of upside for him to be a breakout player this year. And, you know, playing with Dobson, we're, we've mentioned Dobson already. He gets a new contract. He had 51 points last season. Definitely a breakout year for him. Uh, he really reached that, you know, that potential of what we were expecting from him as a first round pick. And now he gets a new deal. It's a bridge deal. Three years, four million per season. Um, I personally think that that contract's an absolute steal for Wonderful. Noah Dobson. Wonderful. Um, and very, very good for the Islanders to get him for, you know, on a very team friendly cap pit for the next yes. few years. And um, I I loved what I saw from Dobson last season. I think he's ready to be a star defenseman. Um, just your thoughts on him and that contract that he just signed. I mean, Dobson, how can you not love him from an Islanders perspective? I mean, I, everyone has loved how Dobson flourished, absolutely flourished this offseason. I mean, if you're talking about the... Uh, I like I call it like superlatives of like the Islanders. If we're talking about most improved player, mm-hmm. it I think that absolutely goes to Dobson from this last Noah Dobson, most improved player superlative from this last season. The last year before it was like Adam Pellick, and then this year it was like Noah Dobson. Like he just absolutely blossomed as a player. And I I, I don't care what people say. I really think a lot of that has to do with Zdeno Char. I think so much can be, you know, so much intelligence, so much wisdom can be taken from a player like Sedano, who's been in this league for since 1996. Mm-hmm. Like he knows this league inside and out. He's been, he's won a Stanley Cup. He knows, you know, how to be a top tier defenseman and him playing with him. I really think he garnered so much. They have that video of on the bench you know Zidane over his shoulder you know pointing on the ice with him saying like this is how you can move here and this is how you can do and Dobson nodding going okay yep. like I really think he had a really big impact on why Noah Dobson is the defenseman he is today why he has 50 points and part of that I think is you know it, it half of that is his own confidence within himself that he had someone you know telling him you know how to improve and then since he has that you know uh that like cushion he could break out as a player himself. And when he was, you know, in the ozone, he wasn't afraid to take those shots, adding to his point totals. And he he could score goals, man. His slap shot was absolutely fantastic at that blue line. And Noah Dobson just it was just when you saw him on the ice, you knew you could depend on him. Yep. You knew he was he was there and he was gonna get he was gonna stop the puck and he could possibly get you a goal on that ice. And so when you saw Noah Dobson, it was just, it was just like, thank God, the kind of moment. So him and Romanov, that that pair is so exciting to me coming into this new season. Uh, four million for him, super happy about that. Romanov, two million, mm-hmm. super happy about that. And I was just telling you before, I nailed those on the head. Th- those were my predictions for those two. Yeah. And I said that on my last pod. They, someone asked me what, what would I be happy about, and those were my two predictions. So the fact that we got those two for six million. Uh, combined is just fantastic yeah definitely and very good contracts for two good young defensemen who are definitely going to play prominent roles on this islanders team this coming season Uh, i want to talk about the new coach a little bit because uh, barry trotz was let go after last season i was certainly surprised when that happened given the fact that they had gone to the final four the two years prior then they had one bad year and all of a sudden trotz is gone um, and then Lane Lambert coming in has kind co- comes from the Barry Trotz coaching tree. So what what are you expecting Lambert to be like with this team? I'm sure there will be some differences from Trotz, but also some similarities, given the fact that he's been an assistant under him for so many years. Um, just, you know, what's that coaching change going to be like for New York? So with the Barry Trotz situation, uh utter complete like i i i remember looking at my phone going you did what like i like utter like heart drop into the stomach like you like you didn't no you didn't 
um it took a while to like kind of like you know when you like have a you need to like kind of compress the feelings to understand why mm -hmm. and understand the steps before you like move on from you have to get past like the first emotions yeah and the, especially for me because <laughs> at first i will just com i will react just completely on emotions yep. but very trots lost his mother and he's he has a son with uh special needs mm -hmm. and i feel like he really needs to focus on notice he's not uh, coaching, coaching. Yep, i think yep. he really need to focus on family right now and i think that's why that this occurred i think that's really why he's not coaching this year he and he and he said you know if i'm gonna give to a team i want to give 100 percent. and i think that's a, a really noble thing from barry and i still have all the love in the world for barry trots and i wish him the best no matter what happens with him with his family with whatever team he goes to a after this season if he coaches again i wish him all the best but and I, I'm you know I'm still gonna miss him, but if I have to say if there's a positive for him leaving, guys like Bellows who we just resigned as well, mm -hmm. uh, and Wallstrom, I think we're gonna see definitely more of them and see if they can show us more on the mm -hmm. ice. Maybe these are guys where they didn't have a chance last season, and this could be the difference. Maybe the, you know we're missing that offensive piece. Maybe they can come up and surprise us this season and show us that they can fill in that slot for us. Yep. Maybe we didn't need a peak. Maybe they can fill it in for us. And we had it there the whole time. But Barry Trotz was not allowing them to fill in that slot because he loves his veterans. Mm -hmm. Who knows? That could be something that we were that was hindering us. You know, if I had to put in a positive for him leaving, even though it kind of crushes my heart still. Um, but Lane Lambert, he's been wanting to break out as his own coach for a while now. We've known that he did like a I think he did an interview with the Ducks, the Anaheim Ducks uh, a year or two ago. And we were like, no, <laughs> uh, but this is his moment to finally be a head coach. He's been wanting this for so long, being under Barry Trotz since Nashville, right? Since yeah, Nashville. they go way back together. Yeah. So he, this is his moment. Yes, he's been under Barry Trotz. And so he may still have some Barry notions, maybe still have like the defensive mind play, but he's going to do it his way. I find that there's no way he's not going to want to play it in his structure. Um being that he's his own head coach you know every head coach is gonna want to play it in their style their structure so I don't know what to expect from Lane Lambert um I'm kind of you know an open book with him I'm kind of just gonna I'm gonna give him like the first few weeks to you know examine his style you see how he like watching from up, up above how is his structure how is his play and how is the team adjusting to it does the team like his and how are they adapting to it because that's the most important part when you see a team with a new head coach are they are we doing well with it and you know do they like it i guess yeah in, in the same retrospect so it's going to be interesting to see how he does with the team he knows this team he yep. it's the same team he know the only new one is really romanov he knows this team inside now he knows the players individually you know he knows to talk to them he had a little bit mm -hmm. of time with them when barry was out with um the funeral last year and you did see more playtime with wallstrom and bellows and things yep. like that so i'm definitely expecting more playtime with them this season but i'm kind of open book with lane lambert i really don't know what to expect from him because you never really got to see him as his own head coach because even when last season he kept barry's system because he was still head coach yeah so this one it's open book i'm really excited to see what he will put out yeah, I think it's going to be really fun to watch preseason training camp and then the first few weeks of the regular season to just see what kind of start do the Islanders get off to. Because um, th this is such a tough team to gauge because last year was a di big disappointment, but it was surprisingly disappointing. Like No one was expecting the Islanders to drop off the way that they did. They had a lot of extenuating circumstances. I don't that... want anyone to put us high anymore. Like, I... <laughs> just yeah. put us low. Please was... just put us low. They had a lot of extenuating circumstances that that led to those a lot of those issues as well. Uh, like the the starting the season for like over a month straight on the road. Thirteen road uh, games. Yeah, thirteen, 13 road, road games. games in a row. Then they they were the first team to really get nailed with COVID and had a bunch oh. of guys out. So they had to play games with a bunch ten, of players. Miss ten, ten players out with COVID. Yeah, it, so they had a lot of outside factors that played into why last year was as tough as it was. 
the the two years before that they were one of the best teams in the eastern conference so it's like with a pretty with a lot of the same roster there it's like could this team get back to being that team or are we going to have a repeat of of last year it seems like this could really go either way for this islanders team which is why we really wanted to add that offensive piece because Mm -hmm. we really feel like it could go that positive direction again without those extenuating circumstances and circumstances i really had the hope you know we could add that just that one really great piece to really just give us a really positive hope of going that way then now we're on a teeter-totter yeah where this could really go up and down either way and i i'm really nervous i'm really nervous because you know what you when my whole life the Islanders have been, a, you know, a bottom tier team. So when you finally in this fan base, like you think about it, three decades, the Islanders have really not been able to do much. Yeah. And then when you finally have tasted almost, you know, the Stanley Cup finals, you've tasted success. You finally have been there. You want to go all the way. You you find you want to push, you know, as much as you can, because you're just one puzzle piece away from completing the puzzle, from reaching the Stanley Cup, from getting it all Mm -hmm. that's why this fan base is so on edge that's why this fan base is as emotional as it is that's why this fan base is so going as you know hard as it is on Lou and everybody is because we have waited so long and we want to see it done all right one last question here just overall how do you feel about the off season and you know how, how are you feeling about this coming year are you optimistic excited on the more nervous side just overall where are you at as an islanders fan right now i mean this off season has been brutal i'm not uh, i'm not even gonna lie about it when you you're seeing all these moves done the goudreau situation i mean new jersey fans were slided islanders fans were slided philly fans didn't know what the hell was going on yeah <laughs> They didn't even offer like Philly yeah. just said no. Well, yeah, Phil, like Philly, like it's just so funny because he would have gone to Philadelphia. He like wanted that. to go there, and that they was, just straight up said but no. That's the thing is, is, is he just wanted to go to Philadelphia. Yeah. So as wild. an Islanders fan, I just felt slighted. Yeah. Because he didn't care about us at all. No. He didn't kill. He didn't care about New Jersey. He didn't care about New York. He didn't want to go to us anyway. So it just felt like why did we even we wasted time. Yeah. That's the thing that pissed me off is because we wasted the time and we wasted the money when we could have been going after other FAs. Yep. And that's why I was so angry about the Goudreau situation, especially when we needed that that piece. Mm-hmm. He wasted our whole day, yep. our whole entire day when we could have been going after other free agents. And we desperately needed that. So thanks, Johnny Goudreau. You wasted us. Um. I'm not, I'm sorry, but like it, that's how I felt. Yeah, no, I felt used. I felt used for his. You know, I, and you know what? Maybe for him that was smart. But he he went to Columbus. As soon as he can leave Columbus, he's out of there. So enjoy him while you can, Columbus fans, because as soon as he can, he's leaving you. Um, as soon as Philly makes the cap space, he's going to Philly. Mm-hmm. Like he doesn't even have like a no trade cl- a trade clause or anything on that contract. So he's as soon as he can, he's moving. He wants to go home. That's the thing. He wants to go to he wants to go to his love, which is Philly. Yeah. Um. So as soon as he can, he will. Um. Just funny. He's going to the place where he hates the cannon. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I found that interesting. Yeah. <laughs> he's gonna be setting it off a few times. Yeah. He's just, he's gonna score, and then he's gonna be like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Don't shoot it. Don't shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. He's gonna request by the team like when I scored no cannon. Yeah. Honestly. <laughs> But and then the I don't know, it was just like silence, you know, it, it I don't know if to say like you can say as an Islanders fan, the offseason was like boring for us. Mm-hmm. It was the most boring summer I've ever gone through. Like I it was just like and if there was any hockey news, I knew it wasn't going to be about us. Like I knew it wasn't going to be anything like I just kind of went through my summer. I don't know. Like it, I knew it wasn't going to be about us. I knew nothing was going to happen like and then the Kadri news kind of honestly shocked me, uh, especially because we were looking for wingers yeah. in the center. You know, people asked me during free agency day, oh, are you going to go for Kadri, Kadri, Kadri? I was like, I wasn't really expecting it because he's a center. Mm-hmm. I was like, he's a great piece, but he's not the piece we need. Yeah. You know, if you're trying to fit like a 
you know, around, uh, you know, around shape into like a square peg. It's not yeah. going to fit. You know what I mean? It's a great, it's a good piece, but it's not going to fit. And so when I heard about the Cadre News here, I was like, oh, okay, how is, how are we going to make this work? Yeah. So I felt like it was going to be a lot of finagling, uh, but I was going to be like, okay, if we can add Cadre, that'd be cool. Yep. Then that didn't happen. I don't know if we couldn't clear the cap space for it. I don't, because obviously with the Romanov and, um, stops and deals that leaves us with like three million to work with yeah it's like it's between two and three right now according to cap friend and he needs seven million in space yeah. so we have to clear four yeah uh and you know with lou with his uh with his talk with us he's like i'm not gonna trade anybody that <laughs> like he's like i'd rather he said to us you know i care about gold differential I'm like, okay, Lou, but you know, with goal differential, like it also matters that we score goals. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it matters that we score goals for goal differential too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like he's forgetting there's another side of that. Uh, and like that, uh, he, it was a lot of his conference was backtracking. Honestly, it's like a lot of backpedal statements like, Oh, I'm going to get you that piece. And then this part, he's like, I'm not going to get you that piece because I care about this team's defense. I'm like, <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> like what like you contradicted yourself yeah I, it was a lot of backpedaling i felt like at the end of the off season of like why he couldn't get things done it, but it was just i felt it was cap situations and wasted time with like the goudreau situation it just we couldn't we couldn't get deals done a lot of and there there's no more blaming it on oh our arena Mm -hmm. a brand new state-of-the-art arena yeah like you can't blame it on that anymore and also with the Goudreau situation I think he said like oh Columbus is beautiful and things like that a lot of people don't understand how beautiful Long Island is I don't think mm -hmm. even Butch Goring said like when he was traded to Long Island he was like I don't know anything about Long Island places is like weird I don't know and then he said when he came here he was like like wow he like it surprised him Yep. you know the the beaches and like the wineries and everything like that here he was like wow i'm actually shocked at how beautiful this place is he even tweeted about it and i'm like i wish more people knew mm -hmm. what long island is and like who we are it's you know people just know new york city yeah that's all they know you know you think about places and you have this like pr uh preconception of what that place is and i i wish that was kind of washed away i wish people knew more about long island and where we live and who we are but yeah it's that's something i think that drives free agents away and that's something i think you know needs to be changed and i maybe that's something that lou just can't sell maybe that's something that lou you know and i think this is a point where we he needs to trade hands i think if this mm -hmm. anything this offseason has told us it's that lou needs after this this season he needs to trade hands and we need a new gm yeah uh, I definitely think that that's that's going to be coming. I think for the Islanders is that change at at general manager for it's, sure. But uh, Kim, thank you, thank you so much for taking the time to do this and uh, coming on talking about the Islanders and uh, really appreciate it. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. All right, everybody. So hope you guys enjoyed this video once again. Kim's channel will be linked down in the description as always. Please check it out and give her a sub. And uh, that was our talk on the aisles. So it's been uh, it's been quite the off season here for New York as they look to have a bounce back year coming up in 2022, 2023. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you all so, so much. And uh, we got a couple more of these coming out here as this off season rolls along. So be on the lookout until then. See you guys next time. Thank you and have a great day.